The Life Story of Meishu Sama. Meishu Sama decided to create his own organization, known as the Canon Society of Japan, to carry on his mission. Many people came to Meishu Sama for help. Meisha Sama needed a location to treat them and found a wonderful site on Tokyo's west side. This haven, which became known as Ozen So, had another wonderful feature. Meisha Sama created a garden there. He allowed no chemicals, fertilizers, or pesticides to touch the soil or crops. He covered the ground with only leaves and grass to keep the soil moist loose and warm. He lavished the garden with the farmer's most wonderful ingredients, love and respect for the plants and the soil that nurtures them. He called this new approach to farming natural agriculture, and it would become part of his core teachings. Jory a form of spiritual healing. Mrs. Mihoko Koyama, the first president of Shume, was among Meisha Sama's most faithful students. She understood the healing power of Meisha Sama's presence and of Jore, because she had experienced them herself. Mrs. Koyama developed a serious kidney problem while she was pregnant. The doctor had insisted that her baby would have to be delivered early. But Mrs. Koyama chose to have Meisha Sama's assistant give her jewelry instead. When her baby did not have to be delivered early, Mrs. Koyama showed her overwhelming gratitude by devoting her whole life to Meisha Sama and to healing others through jewelry. A little boy complained to his mother of a headache. He soon developed a fever, and then he lost consciousness. His mother was also sick at the time. Remember the good neighbor who offered to share jewelry with her? She asked her neighbor to please come and heal her son. Her neighbor took one look, swept the boy up, put him in a taxi, and immediately took him to the Hosan So Center. The boy's mother lay sick and frightened. What if something happened to her son while she lay here at home in bed? The mother fell asleep and dreamed she heard her son's cheerful voice call out, I'm home. Those words seemed to echo around the room. Waking up, she realized her son had indeed returned home. He cheerfully ran to her room and asked her for something to eat. Day by day for a week, his health improved. Finally, the boy's mother went to the center to express her deep gratitude to Meisha Sama in person. Miracles surround Meisha Sama. After the end of World War II, Japan began to allow greater religious freedom to its citizens. Many people were healed and received great blessings. And as a result, the organization grew rapidly. Meisha Sama had a dream of creating heaven on earth. Therefore, he bought a villa in Hakone and converted it to a unique museum. This museum opened a new world of beauty to everyone in Japan. It was an exciting time and an important event because Meisha Sama taught that art and beauty heals. An old man who was crippled with rheumatism picked up a cane that Meisha Sama had accidentally left behind after a visit. Using the cane, the old man set out for his walk. He was shocked to find his legs now moved without pain. Soon his rheumatism completely disappeared.
Strange and wonderful things often happened around Meshusama. Once, while out flying a large kite, the kite glowed with a strange purple light. Called away, Meshusama handed the string of the kite to the person standing beside him. The beautiful purple light immediately disappeared. When Meshusama returned, his assistant handed the string back to him, and the purple light returned. Many people believe the light that dwelled within Mesha Summer transferred through his hands to the string of the kite, causing the kite to glow. Makoto, honesty and keeping one's promises. Two assistants accidentally broke a lampshade while cleaning. They were very sorry and rushed out to buy an identical lampshade, hoping no one would notice their mistake. However, mistakes are not so easily hidden. Major Summer entered the room and noticed the atmosphere of the room felt lacking in something. He realized Makoto had fled from this room. Makoto is a word that means sincerity, honesty, and to keep one's promises among other things. Mesha Summer scolded them. You may deceive people, but you can never deceive God. At another time, a different assistant broke an art object, but she immediately went to Mesha Summer to tell him what she had done and apologized. He listened and then did nothing but tell her to please be more careful in the future. Mesha Summer set a good example for his followers by practicing Makoto himself. The Secret of Happiness Mesha Summer often entertained his children at the dinner table by beating time to the music on the radio. Sometimes he hummed or clapped his hands to the music or tapped out a tune on the tea canister to the delight of the children. When someone asked Mesha Summer why he was such a happy person, he replied that since he was young, his hobby was to make others happy and to make them laugh. He wanted everyone to be happy, blessed, and at peace. Big changes begin to happen. At the end of May in 1950, Mesha Summer was arrested and kept in custody for 18 days. Every day he was asked many questions by angry men who refused to believe anything he said. They made his head pound and his stomach hurt. One night, Mesha Summer fell asleep and had a wonderful dream. He saw himself entering a beautiful palace on the top of Mount Fuji. When he woke up in the morning, he was so filled with joy, he forgot his stomach pain. He sat, remembering his beautiful dream, and wondered if his pain was meant to deepen his connection to the sphere of divine light within him. Mesha Summon often said, the power of jewelry and the orb of light came from Canon, known as the deity of compassion. As he knelt thinking about the light, the orb began to grow in size. He felt the sphere of light was a tangible proof that the divine spirit lived within him. Mesha Summer felt the light pulse with energy and his own spirit blend together with that of the divine spirit. Soon after this miraculous event, Mesha Summer was released from jail and the courts cleared his name. World citizens, we are all one family. Four days after the spring ceremony was a joyful day at Mesha Summer's home. A beautiful tea storage jar was delivered to him. And when Mesha Summer first saw this jar, he longed to have it for the Hakone Museum. The jar was so beautiful that it had been declared a national treasure by the Japanese government. That night, 
Misha Summer slept tranquilly with the jar nestled close to his pillow. On the afternoon of the 9th of February, Misha Summer's condition worsened and he fell into a coma. Then, on February the 10th, 1955, at 3.33 p.m., Misha Summer peacefully left this world. Today, his body is no longer with us, but his divine light is stronger than ever. His dream was to relieve poverty, illness, and strife. Misha Summer knew that spreading teachings would spread his dream of peace and tolerance to people all over the world. He knew he could depend on us to help create a paradise on Earth. In the future, people will have to become world citizens. We wish to bring harmony to all humankind, to widen people's consciousness, to accept that all countries are members of one family.